Welcome to the Aging Answers Podcast. I'm Rob Fabian with Age of Central Texas. We are a regional nonprofit organization that tackles the challenges of aging with expert solutions. Joining us again is our expert, KC Lawrence. And KC, today let's talk about memory loss. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I'm out in public and I'm talking to groups, someone will come up to me and say, I'm really worried about my memory. I'm starting to forget things and I'm scared that it might be dementia. So when someone is in that position, they're having some changes in their memory, what is the advice to them? What should they, what should they do? It's, it's so scary to notice these changes in your memory or your thinking, and the most important thing is to go and talk to your doctor. And the reason for that is that there's several causes of changes in memory thinking that are treatable. Some of those are depression, medication side effects, vitamin deficiencies, thyroid problems, and if you go and talk to your doctor, they can get those treatable things addressed and your memory could return to normal. Right, so it may not be dementia. It might just be something as simple as a change in medication mm -hmm. or in lifestyle yep. that can fix that. But why is it so important mm -hmm. to get that diagnosis? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think, you know, getting a diagnosis can sort of relieve the weight of the unknown on you, right? right. You know, this is what's happening to me. There is a name for it, and I think that can provide relief for a lot of people. Um, the other thing is, when you have a diagnosis early, which is so important, yes. then you can move forward with treatment, you can make plans for the future, legal and financial plans, living options. Um, you also have more opportunities to participate in clinical trials. And very importantly, you can get information and support for both you and those who care about you. Right, the, the early diagnosis is the key there mm -hmm. because if you if it does turn out to be dementia, mm -hmm. having that early diagnosis, at least then you know what you're dealing with, mm -hmm. you know what to do about it, mm -hmm. and there are things that you can do to slow it down and to mm -hmm. live a much healthier life. Mm -hmm. So you've convinced me, I'm going mm -hmm. to go talk to my doctor mm -hmm. about it. What should I expect to happen when I'm in the doctor's office discussing this yes. with the doctor? Yeah, so every doctor does things differently, but what most doctors will do is ask you what's been going on. If you brought someone with you, they'll also ask them what's been going on. Um, they'll do a medical history. Mm -hmm. They're also likely to do some blood tests to see, is it a vitamin de deficiency? Is it a problem with your thyroid that could be causing the problem? And then there's a whole host of other things that they may do, or they may refer you to a specialist to do. And that includes evaluating you for depression, mm -hmm. uh, doing a cognitive test, um, like drawing a clock face, or asking you to count backwards from 100 by sevens, or remembering words, those things like, things like that. They may also do a brain scan as well to try and figure out exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and if the doctor does give you a diagnosis of dementia, then they may give recommendations for treatment. So they may recommend um, a program or support to help with quality mm -hmm. of life. They may recommend medications that while they uh, don't cure the disease or um, change anything that's going on in the brain, they can't help with symptoms. Right. Let's say that the diagnosis does come back that it is mm -hmm. dementia. Why is it so important to know that mm -hmm. and specifically to know what type of dementia mm -hmm. it is? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very important to know what type it is because the different types of dementia have different symptoms and have different things going on in the brain. And so the type of dementia will inform the treatment that the doctor prescribes. It will also help you know what to expect. Um, so there are some types of dementia that have memory loss as the first symptom. There are other types where changes in memory don't come until later. Mm -hmm. And there's changes maybe in, in judgment that happen mm -hmm. earlier. So that's really important. Um, it also helps you uh, get the most out of your treatment, helps you know what to expect, and helps you to feel prepared. Right. And also gives you more quality of life as well. Yes. So, finally, if I'm going to go to the doctor, I'm mm -hmm. going to talk to my doctor about my memory issues, what should I prepare before mm -hmm. I go to the doctor's office? Yes, because you want to be, be prepared to go so that you aren't, uh, I think it can help reduce you feeling nervous if you kind of start a little before you go. 
Um, there are some great checklists and questions that you can answer online at the Alzheimer's Association's website um, to kind of get your thoughts together, maybe get some things down in writing so that you really know what you want to say to the doctor. I would also highly recommend that you take somebody with you um, that can support you and also give the doctor additional information about what's been going on with you. So we want to get our thoughts together before we go. Specifically, we want to talk to the doctor about why we think we're having issues. Mm -hmm. uh, have our family history prepared, our personal mm -hmm. medical history. Take someone with us, mm -hmm. not only for that support, but also have another voice mm -hmm. who can speak to what's going on. And just know that it's an important issue. If you think that you're having a memory issue, maybe it is something that is a cognitive decline but maybe it's not mm -hmm. and so it's better to find out what really is going on mm -hmm. because if it does turn out to be a cognitive decline there's so much that you can do about it mm -hmm. but we want to catch it early mm -hmm. so that we can improve our quality of life mm -hmm. and our opportunities absolutely fantastic thank you casey thank you thank you for joining us for this aging answers podcast if you have a question you'd like one of our experts to answer send us an email all of our information is listed below, along with our website where you can find more information. And thank you for joining us and check out all of our other podcasts that we have available as well.